it is an absolutely beautiful and slightly chilly mid-November evening in Santa Monica and we are about to jump into this ocean for a cold plunge. Now a lot of you have probably seen us jumping into various rivers, lakes, and waterfalls on some of our adventures and sometimes we even talk about why we do that but today we actually wanted to break down exactly why we cold plunge and how we do it. There are a lot of benefits to cold plunging, but there are also some myths out there, such as the idea that you're supposed to do it right after a workout to reduce inflammation. That's not actually proven, but there are many benefits, including mental resilience, mood elevation, and fat burning that we're going to talk about today. So, as a lot of you know, I've been dealing with a back injury lately, and there are a lot of studies out there about how cold plunging as you can see <laughs> and having an injury like this definitely takes a toll not only on your body but also on your mental health and ah, I'm so cold. <laughs> basically the concept is that little stressors over time can actually make you more resilient to a big stressor in the real here world. comes one to get better at cold plunging. <laughs> so the theory is that if your body learns not to go into panic mode while immersed in cold water, then it won't go into panic mode during other stressful situations, like for instance, hanging off the edge of a 2000 foot cliff. Studies done on people who practice cold water immersion have actually shown that these people have different biochemical responses to the same stressor as people who don't practice cold water immersion. In other words, people who practice cold water immersion produce less stress hormones in response to the same stressor compared to those who don't. A major reason that we practice cold plunging is to enhance our overall mental toughness. If we can take freezing cold water for five Five or 10 or 15 minutes, then probably we can endure other things like, I don't know, the last six miles of a Sufferfest or getting pricked by a cactus in the middle of the desert. So a lot of the studies show that if you cold plunge regularly, you can actually elevate your levels of dopamine, serotonin, all those chemicals that are so important for mood elevation and stress regulation. There have been several studies that demonstrate a correlation between cold water immersion and improved mood and lower depressive symptoms. I personally have found cold water immersion to be very helpful for improving my mood, especially when going through something like a sports injury. So research also shows that if you cold plunge with someone dressed in the getup that Adam's dressed in, it actually will increase your dopamine levels by 200%. <laughs> My dopamine's already high. Yeah, but mine is gonna be even higher after this situation. Another great benefit of cold plunging, according to the study so far, is that it can actually change the structure of fat in your body. So, Wave! trying not to, not to drown our iPhone. <laughs> Crashed by a wave. The research basically shows that cold plunging has the ability to change the fat in your body from white fat to beige or brown fat. Now white fat's the fat that most of us have. It's the kind of fat that you don't want. Beige and brown fat is the kind of fat that's metabolically active. It actually increases your metabolism and can be used for energy. And it's the reason why you help, it helps you get warm. I'm starting to lose my breath because it's so cold. <laughs> but basically, if you start shivering while you cold plunge, your body is gonna wanna make more beige and brown fat to help warm you up. Now, a lot of you often ask, what the heck is up with you guys always cold plunging midway through a monster suffer fest? Three, go with these. Ah! Oh my God, you did it. Ah! Oh my God. You did the polar bear plunge. Ah! And the truth of the matter is that we're often doing this to get ourselves to the finish line. We started doing these mid-hike cold plunges years ago when we realized that getting out of an icy frozen lake suddenly made us feel totally revivified. 
and able to physically get ourselves those last eight to 10 miles back to the car. And as it turns out, the scientific literature actually backs this up. So there's plenty of data to demonstrate that the cooling effects of something like a cold plunge can actually increase your endurance. Hyperthermia is one of the most common causes for muscles to just give up. And we have definitely found that cold plunging at the very least delays that muscular response out on the trails. Oh my gosh. It is chilly in here. The actual level of coldness that you need in terms of temperature is different just based on how adapted you are. But pretty much most of the studies will show that if you're getting below 60 degrees, you're looking pretty good. Yeah. Now we usually try to stay in until we start shivering, <laughs> which I'm already shivering. It's pretty darn cold in here today. I think it's definitely below 59. Oh, but usually about at least five minutes and I'm good. The reason you see Adam swimming right now is actually that most of the research studies show that people who cold water swim and not just plunge actually get the greatest benefits. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Everyone always thinks when you walk out that you're gonna be like some Michael Phelps type swimmer and then you whip out the snorkel. Woo! That is a way to cold plunge though, you guys. Go in, snorkel, body surf, swim. Oh, it feels amazing. I gotta say my mood is elevated. Yeah, definitely. <laughs>